What is atrial fibrillation? Before I will explain what is atrial fibrillation, I have to explain the normal heart rhythm so you can understand atrial fibrillation better. The heart pumps blood to the rest of the body. During each heartbeat, the two upper chambers of the heart, which are the atria, contract, followed by the two lower chambers, which are the ventricles. These actions, when timed perfectly, allow for an efficient pump. The timing of the heart's contractions is directed by the heart's electrical system. The electrical impulse begins in the sinoatrial or SA node. The SA node is located in the right atrium. Normally, the SA node adjusts the rate of impulses depending on the person's activity. For example, the SA node increases the rate of impulses during exercise and decreases the rate of impulses during sleep. When the SA node fires an impulse, electrical activity spreads through the right and left atria causing them to contract and force blood into the ventricles. The lungs give the blood a new supply of oxygen. The lungs also breathe out carbon dioxide as a waste product. When the SA node is directing the electrical activity of the heart, the rhythm is called normal sinus rhythm. The normal heart beats in this type of regular rhythm is about 60 to 100 times per minute at rest. Now we will discuss the atrial fibrillation. Atrial fibrillation, or also known as AFib, is the most common irregular heart rhythm that starts in the atria. Instead of the SA node, directing the electrical rhythm, many different impulses rapidly fire at once, causing a very fast, chaotic rhythm in the atria. Because the electrical impulses are so fast and chaotic, the atria cannot contract and or squeeze blood effectively into the ventricle. Instead of the impulse traveling in an orderly fashion through the heart, many impulses begin at the same time and spread through the atria, competing for a chance to travel through the AV node. The AV node limits the number of impulses that travel to the ventricles, but many impulses get through in a fast and disorganized manner. The ventricles contract irregularly, leading to a rapid and irregular heartbeat. The rate of impulses in the atria can range from 300 to 600 beats per minute. There are two types of atrial fibrillation. Paroxysmal is the intermittent, meaning it comes and goes and continuous is persistent. What happens during AFib? In AFib, the top chambers of the heart, called the atria, fibrillate or quiver or twitch quickly instead of beating effectively to move blood into the ventricles. This causes the bottom chambers of the heart to beat irregularly. A normal heart rate is about 60 to 100 beats per minute. When you are in AFib, your heartbeat 
will be irregular and can go up to 600 bits per minute. Episodes of atrial fibrillation may come and go, or they may be persistent. Although AFib itself usually isn't life-threatening, it is a serious medical condition that requires proper treatment to prevent stroke. What are the dangers of atrial fibrillation? Some people live for years with atrial fibrillation without problems. However, atrial fibrillation can lead to future problems. Because the atria are beating rapidly and irregularly, blood does not flow through them as quickly. This makes the blood more likely to clot. If a clot is pumped out of the heart, it can travel to the brain, resulting in a stroke, or to the lungs, causing a pulmonary embolism. What causes atrial fibrillation? People with atrial fibrillation are five to seven times more likely to have a stroke than the general population. Clots can also travel to other parts of the body, like the kidneys, heart, and intestines, that cause other damage. Atrial fibrillation can decrease the heart's pumping ability. The irregularity can make the heart work less efficiently. Atrial fibrillation that occurs over a long period of time can significantly weaken the heart and lead to heart failure. Atrial fibrillation is associated with an increased risk of stroke, heart failure, and even death. How to treat atrial fibrillation? The goals of treatment for atrial fibrillation are regaining a normal heart rhythm or sinus rhythm, controlling the heart rate, preventing blood clots, and reducing the risk of stroke. Many options are available to treat atrial fibrillation including lifestyle changes, medications, catheter-based procedures, and surgery. The type of treatment that is recommended for you is based on your heart rhythm and symptoms. Initially, medications are used to treat atrial fibrillation. Medications may include rhythm control medications, or antiarrhythmic drugs. Antiarrhythmic medications help return the heart to its normal sinus rhythm. You may have to stay in the hospital when you first start taking these medications, so your heart rhythm and response to the medication can be carefully monitored. These medications are effective 30 to 60 percent of the time, but may lose their effectiveness over time. Your doctor may need to prescribe several different antiarrhythmic medications to determine the right one for you. It is important to talk to your doctor about your symptoms and any changes in your condition. For the nurses, our responsibility is to monitor the heart rhythm of the patient, report prolonged QT interval to the doctor to prevent development of a lethal arrhythmia. Your hospital should have protocols regarding these medications, like for example, with tricosine, we do EKG before giving the dose. 
The myocardial cells are located in the muscular layer of the atrial and ventricular walls. The primary function of these cells is contraction and relaxation. The nursing responsibility is to monitor the heart rate and the blood pressure of the patient. It's because we don't want the heart rate or blood pressure to be too low that the patient will not have enough perfusion to the vital organs. Another important medicine we use for AFib is anticoagulant medications. Anticoagulant or antiplatelet therapy medications such as warfarin or coumadin reduce the risk of blood clots and stroke, but they do not eliminate the risk. Regular blood tests are required when taking Coumadin to evaluate the effectiveness. If you are taking warfarin alternatives, regular blood tests are not required. Talk to your doctor about the anticoagulant medication that is right for you. The nursing responsibility is to monitor signs and symptoms of bleeding. Educate the patient about the foods that can interfere with the effect of the medicine. Monitor how thin the blood by checking the INR. Know the therapeutic level of INR. In addition to taking medications, there are some changes you can make to improve your heart health. If your irregular heart rhythm occurs more often with certain activities, Avoid those activities and tell your doctor. Sometimes your medications may need to be adjusted. Quit smoking. Limit your intake of alcohol. Limit the use of caffeine. Some people are sensitive to caffeine and may notice more symptoms when using caffeinated products such as tea, coffee, energy drinks, colas, and some over-the-counter medications. Beware of stimulants used in cough and cold medications, as some of these medications contain ingredients that may increase the risk of irregular heart rhythms. Read medication labels and ask your doctor or pharmacist what type of cold medication is best for you. Control high blood pressure. If you are obese or overweight, achieve a desirable weight. Control blood sugar levels. Treat sleep apnea. When medications do not work to correct or control atrial fibrillation, or when medications are not tolerated, a procedure may be necessary to treat the abnormal heart rhythm, such as electrical cardioversion, pulmonary vein antrum isolation procedure, ablation of the AV node followed by pacemaker placement, or surgical ablation such as MACE procedure or minimally invasive surgical treatment. Electrical cardioversion is a medical procedure that restores a normal heart rhythm by sending electric shocks to your heart using a defibrillator. First, the anesthesiologist will give you a short-acting anesthesia to put you to sleep. An electrical shock is delivered through patches placed on the chest wall. This shock resets the heart and restores a normal rhythm. Sometimes cardioversion is used to restore a normal heart rhythm and allow the medication to successfully maintain the normal rhythm. Cardioversion frequently restores a normal rhythm, although its effect may not be permanent. Pulmonary vein ablation 
or also called pulmonary vein isolation, is a cardiac ablation that uses heat or cold energy to create tiny scars in your heart to block abnormal electrical signals and restore a normal heartbeat. It may be an option for people who cannot tolerate medications or when medications are not effective in treating atrial fibrillations. Since atrial fibrillation usually begins in the pulmonary veins or at their attachment to the left atrium, energy is applied around the connections of the pulmonary veins to the left atrium during the pulmonary vein ablation procedure. If AFib doesn't get better with medications or other therapies, a doctor might recommend a procedure called cardiac ablation. Sometimes ablation is the first treatment for certain patients. Cardiac ablation uses heat, a radio frequency energy, or extreme cold cryoablation to create scars in your heart to block abnormal electrical signals and restore a normal heartbeat. A doctor inserts a flexible tube or catheter through a blood vessels, usually in your groin and into your heart. More than one catheter may be used. Sensors on the tip of the catheter apply the cold or heat energy. A pacemaker is a device that sends small electrical impulses to the heart muscle to maintain a suitable heart rate. Pacemakers are implanted in people with AFib who have a slow heart rate. The pacemaker has a pulse generator and leads or wires that send impulses from the pulse generator to the heart muscle as well as sense the heart's electrical activity. The pacemaker generator houses the battery and a tiny computer. Newer pacemakers have many sophisticated features designed to help with the management of arrhythmias and to optimize heart rate related function as much as possible. Another procedure we do for AFib is the left atrial appendage closure. The left atrial appendage, or LAA, is a small air-shaped sac in the muscle wall of the left atrium. It is unclear what function, if any, the LAA performs. When a patient has atrial fibrillation, the electrical impulses that control the heartbeat do not travel in an orderly fashion through the heart. Instead, many impulses begin at the same time and spread through the atria. The fast and chaotic impulses do not give the atria time to contract and or effectively squeeze blood into the ventricles. Because the LAA is a little pouch. Blood collects there and can form clots in the LAA and atria. When blood clots are pumped out of the heart, they can cause a stroke. People with atrial fibrillation are five to seven times more likely to have a stroke than the general population. If you are at risk, of developing clots in the left atrium or LAA, your doctor may recommend a procedure to seal off your LAA. This can reduce your risk of stroke and eliminate the need to take blood thinning medication. There are several options and devices available for closure of the LAA, such as the Watchman device. Your doctor will talk to you about the best options for your individual needs. Certain patients are candidates for surgical treatment of atrial fibrillation. These include patients 
with one or more of the following characteristics. Atrial fibrillation that persists over optimal treatment with medications. Unsuccessful catheter ablation. Blood clots in the left atrium. History of stroke. Enlarged left atrium. And other conditions requiring heart surgery. One of the surgical procedure we perform to treat AFib is maze procedure. During this procedure, a series of precise incisions or lesions are made in the right and left atria to confine the electrical impulses, to define pathways to reach the AV node. These incisions prevent the abnormal impulses from affecting the atria and causing atrial fibrillation. The surgical maze procedure can be performed traditionally with a technique in which precise surgical scars are created in the atria. It may also be performed using newer technologies designed to create lines of conduction block with radio frequency, microwave, laser, ultrasound, or cryothermy or freezing. With these techniques, lesions and ultimately scar tissue is created to block the abnormal electrical impulses from being conducted through the heart and to promote the normal conduction of impulses through the proper pathway. Many of these approaches can be performed with minimally invasive endoscopic surgical techniques. If a patient has atrial fibrillation and requires surgery to treat other heart problems such as valve disease or coronary artery disease, the surgeon may perform the surgical treatment for atrial fibrillation at the same time. Excision or exclusion of the left atrial appendage. During surgical procedures to treat atrial fibrillation, the left atrial appendage is removed and the tissue is closed with a special stapling device or it can be excluded with a device called the atric clip. The atric clip is implanted from outside the heart and stops the blood flow between the LAA and the left atrium. That's all for today's video. Thank you for watching. If you are new to my channel, press subscribe in my YouTube channel, follow me in Facebook, press the notification button to be notified with my upcoming videos. Thank you for your support.